Hi, I'm Wheeler Winston Dixon, James Ryan Professor of Film Studies at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, and today we're going to talk about movie posters. Movie posters are peculiar because they're designed to sell a film, but they're also artworks in their own right. Uh, and originally they were designed simply just to be thrown up in front of the movie theater and then disposed shortly thereafter. But the ones that have survived have now become works of art which command very high prices at auctions, up to $66,000, $70,000 a piece. So this morning we're going to take a look at a couple of really iconic movie posters and see what they look like. Some of the earliest posters are for Charlie Chaplin's films, Cruel, Cruel Love and The Circus. Claudette Colbert and She Married Her Boss, a, a really idealized romantic poster, and Beau Geste with Gary Cooper at his most beautiful. Joan Crawford and Betty Davis featured prominently in things like I Live My Life and Jezebel. Marlena Dietrich in Ernst Lubitsch's Morocco and Angel, also iconic posters. Rudolph Valentino made enormous splash in a film called A Sainted Devil, which shows his iconic personality at its most pronounced. Uh, Cary Grant and Rosalind Russell in His Girl Friday, The Girl from Chicago. This is a film uh, by Oscar Micheaux. This is an African-American film uh, which basically offered an alternative to the Hollywood cinema of the time. Uh, as we get into the 30s, we have uh, Jeanette McDonald and Nelson Eddy and Rose Marie, William Powell in The Great Zigfield, uh, the fantastic murder mystery Laura, which has got Gene Tierney and Dana Andrews and Clifton Webb in his breakthrough role. Um, more violent posters for the Humphrey Bogart vehicle, San Quentin. The Man Who Knew Too Much with Peter Lorre, the, the brilliant Alfred Hitchcock film, also The 39 Steps. William Powell and Myrna Loy in The Thin Man. And Babe Ruth starring in Babe Ruth Comes Home, a film which is about baseball. Some of the most iconic posters come from the 1940s. Uh, things like Arsenic and Old Lace with Cary Grant. Uh, European posters, for example, for The Bicycle Thief, pushed a new level of reality into cinema, as did the one for Roma Cita Aperta, or Open City. Many posters basically are art immediately. The ones for Jean Cocteau's films Orphée and Beauty and the Beast, La Belle et la Bête, created by the artist himself, become instantaneous um, art objects. But more contemporary posters like ones for The Thief of Baghdad, The Red Shoes by Powell and Pressburger, uh, Laurence Olivier's Hamlet, and the posters for horror films like Frankenstein Meets the Wolfman, Boris Karloff and Bela Lugosi in Black Friday, The Phantom of the Opera, uh, the Scarlet Claw Sherlock Holmes films, not to mention Alfred Hitchcock's posters for things like Rope, Suspicion, Spellbound, Posters basically serve two functions. They're to advertise films and to get you into the theater, as well as lobby cards, which do the same thing. And of course, in the 50s and 60s, they used to trick them up by coloring the lobby cards when the films were in black and white. But posters now have acquired a, a cultural and a social resonance you know, through the passing of the years, so that the posters have become, in many ways, sort of memory aids for the films themselves. You look at the poster for Casablanca with Ingrid Bergman and Humphrey Bogart and it just brings back so many memories. And the other thing to remember about posters is for many years before the advent of DVDs and VHS, all that a person could personally possess would be a poster or a picture or a lobby card, something to trigger all of those memories. So movie posters are incredibly powerful as emotional triggers to the past. They also tell us what to expect when we get into a theater. Um, and they are um, images which basically contain, transcend, and advertise the film that's on display. Posters are an indispensable part of American movie culture.